Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. As you know, this is a special program. And uh, what makes it special is we invited the people. It is, it is an honor and a pleasure to honor those people who went for Hajj. And this was a, you know, they, they don't go to Hajj, they are brought for the Hajj. And they are the one, the chosen ones, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called to visit their house. And these are the ones who went and they said, Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, in alhamda wal nimata la sharika laka laka. They are the one who answered the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, the country I came from, it is a big deal, the people who go to Hajj, to receive them, to invite them, and to ask for the dua. Because like the brother said, these brothers, when they come back, they have a zero meter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes out their whole sin. So the idea is to invite them and ask for dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them the source of fulfilling our needs, and may Allah accept their dua so the whole, the whole communities get blessed with them. Inshallah, we will start our program. I'll, I'll invite Hafiz uh, Mustafa for the Talawat Qalam Pak, inshallah. And after that, there will be short bayan by our Imam Mikhail. He's here, and then, inshallah, Imam Kasha will come into his bayan, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wa atimmu al-hajj wal umrata lillah Fa in uhsirtum fama staysara min al-hajj ولا تحلقوا رؤوسكم حتى يبلغ الهدي محلة فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على فمن كان منكم مريضا أو به أذم من رأسه أذم من رأسه ففدية من صيام أو صدقة أو نسك فإذا أمنتم فمن تمتع بالحمرة بالعمرة إلى الحج فما استيسر من الهد فمن لم يجد فصيام ثلاثة أيام في الحج وسبعة إذا رجعتم ذلك لمن لم يكن أهله حاضر المسجد الحرام واتقوا الله واعلموا أن الله شديد العقاب صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير حافظ مصطفى and with that, I'll invite, uh, first of all, I'll invite all the hujjaj, I'll request them to come towards the uh, front of the uh, row, so we all know, the brothers know, who went for hajj, inshallah. Jazakallah. I think uh, the hujjaj, they need to move a little bit and come in the first row. And with that, I'll invite Morana Mikhail. First of all, I have to apologize, Morana Mikhail, that as you know, that we, every Friday, we have the class for the tafsir, tafsir al-Quran, and Maulana sir wasn't feeling well, but still he came, and I, we should have uh, told him about the change of the schedule. My apology, Maulana sir. And, uh, but we, and it's, it's a good thing that you are here also. <laughs> that gives us a pleasure to have your company, exactly. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamu ala abad al-nadeen astafa My dear respected elders and brothers First of all, our condolences and, and pure grief for those people in Connecticut who went through that terrible thing If we can all imagine just being in their, in their shoes right now leaving your five-year-old at school 
uh, which most of the time is the safest place you can put your children, and then getting a phone call at 9.30 that there's a shooting, and then going to realize that your child is no more. What a terrible thing they are going through. Every human being, whether he's Muslim, non-Muslim, uh, whether you have children, no children, uh, whoever you are should be feeling grief over this. And of course, right in our backyard, Connecticut is us. That's, I mean, that's right in New York. And also, it just baffles me that every one to two months, these incredibly terrible things are happening. Uh, where people, where sometimes, na'udhu billah, normal people are committing such acts that, uh, that I don't know anyone who can do such a thing and I don't know anyone who knows anyone who can do such a thing like that. But unfortunately, this is the condition that we are in. Insan today thinks he's very updated and that he's in a very good condition and with the advances that we have, we feel we're very smart. But uh, believe me, Insan is doing some things today that the people of thousands of years ago would never even do. They would never even think about doing it. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. As Muslims also, we need to be worried. It was in my masjid a few weeks ago where the Mu'adhin was stabbed and these type of things are happening and we know that with Islam, they have some type of motives behind also. May Allah Ta'ala protect our Muslim schools and all of the you know, schools all across the nation. May Allah Ta'ala protect us uh, from these evil uh, occurrences that keep happening uh, so often. May Allah Ta'ala protect all of us. On a lighter note, I congratulate all of the people who are coming from Hajj. It is a great ibadat that you have done. One of the greatest ibadat of all of the ibadat that we are performing for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is one of those five pillars one of those five things that the whole Islam rests upon. This great building of Islam and this great imara and this great, uh, you know, deen that we have, it sits upon certain bases and, and pillars and it has foundations. And one of those great foundations is the Hajj, you know, the Hajj al-Bayt, that once in our lifetime at least, we should go visit that place where the Nabuwat of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began and sat sat with that also an opportunity to travel a little bit and to go see, you know, go to Medina Munawwara and visit the Qabr of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These two things you have come back from. It was a great trip which Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned in the Sahih Hadith where Nabi Sallallahu has mentioned that al hajjul mabrur la jaza'a lahu illa jannah that the hajj mabrur the accepted hajj that hajj which was performed without any sins and was performed in the right manner there is no reward for it except that that person will get jannah that person will be awarded paradise through the virtue of this great hajj such a great place you went to Umar radiallahu anhu when he was going for an umrah and came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he asked Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for his ijazah, for his permission. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa'adhinala, he gave him the permission to go for the umrah. And while he was walking away, he said, Ya Umar, ashrikna fi du'aikum. O Umar, make sure you join us in your du'as. Don't forget us in making dua. You are going to a very Mubarak place, the Bayt al-Haram, the Bayt Allah, the Kaaba. You are going there making dua. Nabi sallallahu alayhi himself was asking him, Yo Umar, O oh Umar, uh, please join us in your duas. Please make sure you make dua for us as well. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu said that this was one of the happiest days of my life. That Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asking me to make dua for him. And of course, Umar himself was a great person, but it wasn't common where Rasulullah asked others to make dua for him, but it was actually because of the great place. Such a place we know where our salats are multiplied. Such a place we know, according to the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that every single person who has come back, raja'aka yawmin waladathu ummu. He has come back after the hajj, like that day his mother gave birth to him. Like a newborn baby. 
those things that keep us so far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those things that we regret so much, and those things that become a barrier between us and the ma'rifat and the complete recognition of our Lord, Rabbul Alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those things, they are completely forgiven and wiped out because and vir by virtue of this beautiful hajj. So I congratulate all of you who have performed this hajj, who have spent your money, have spent your time, which is one of the beautiful aspects of hajj. The salat usually has to do with the badan, the body. The zakat has to do with the money. But the hajj, it is both put together. A person sacrifices his body, and he also sacrifices his wealth. And he goes and he visits the Baytullah, and so many different things I'm sure you people have experienced there. I have gone also. There is nothing like hajj. There is no ibadat in deen that is like hajj. The walking, the praying, the tawaf, the sa'i, different ibadat that are so makhsus, they are so you know, specified only with the hajj. And we can't do them anywhere else. Tawaf is haram to do on anything else. Sa'i, you can't even do it. People do nafil sa'i. There is no nafil sa'i. <laughs> sa'i is only during the hajj and umrah. Sometimes you see people, they're walking back and forth. There is not. It's only special. Umrah and hajj. Other than that, to walk there, there's no meaning to walk there. Uh, Arafat. Have you ever been to Arafat out of hajj? Empty. Nobody there. Right? After five minutes, you want to leave. But at the time of hajj, it becomes like jannah. The same thing, Mina. All these different places, completely empty right now. Not one person is sitting there. Nobody's looking over there. At the time of Hajj, Al Hajj Ashhuru Ma'lumat. It is a few months which are very, very known. And they are a few months which every Muslim cherishes. This was a great ni'mat of Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala gave you the tawfiq to go there. Because they may believe me, there are many people who don't have the ability to go. And they have been wishing this much longer than you have to go there and to see the Baytullah. Just to see it. Many of them, even if they didn't go for the Hajj, even if they weren't able to go for the Hajj, um, not that they wouldn't mind, but just the mere vision, just to open their eyes and see Baytullah. And they dream about it. How many of us have had dreams of Baytullah before? We even went there. Just to go there and see it and come back, they would give <laughs> body parts just to do that. Believe me. Such a ni'mat and such a great blessing of Allah Ta'ala. I congratulate all of you that you have done that and taken up something very, very great. May Allah Ta'ala accept it. But of course now that we have come back from the Hajj, there are some realities that we have to face. Because what we went through was like a dream. You know? It's like this small child who goes to Disney World. And he, you know, no park can compare to it. And you take him to Disney, when you come back and you take him to the McDonald's park, it's nothing. He sits there, mopey dopey, you know? It's, he's sitting there like, what is this? We were just in Disney World two weeks ago. Let's go back to Disney World again. And we know there's no Disney World every day except for Mickey Mouse. Only he gets in there for free every day. Otherwise they charge you, it's even more than Hajj. So, you know, the, the Hajj, in, you know, lack of a better term, is the Disney World of Ibarat, you know? If anyone, I don't know if you guys ever went to Disney when you were little kids, but it's like a, a dream, it's like a cartoon. <laughs> for us in Ibarat also, the Hajj is like a dream. You know, we can pray the salat, we can go to different places and, and we can do different ibadat. But the hajj, when you enter into the haram and when you go to Medina Munawwara and you do tawaf and you put the ihram on and you see the millions of people, nothing can match it. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So it's like a dream. Every salat is multiplied. All the sins are forgiven. All the duas are accepted. But yet it all comes to an end sometime. We have to leave from there and we have to come back. And we have to remember the maqsad and the purpose again. Because all of the great ibadat of deen are periodical. They're only for a certain time. 
They come back again, but they don't last forever. Why? They are all practices for us. As in the case of Ramadan, it's only one month. But that doesn't mean that everlasting effect it doesn't go longer than one month. The same thing is the Hajj. There has to be an everlasting effect. Imam Ghazali, many ulama have written that the Hajj Mabrur, a sign of it, the Hajj Mabrur in itself has other things. It's that where in some hadith comes, it's Kathatu Salam, Ifshau Salam, to give a lot of Salam, Ita'amu Ta'am, to feed the people. Right? These are things that are, you know, in the, uh, the sabr, the patience. This is the Hajj Mabrur. But the, ath- the atharat, the effects of Hajj Mabrur after, is supposed to be that that person should have some change in his life. I remember when one scholar was here from India, he said even the Hindus used to say Hajj Sab, you know? When the person went for Hajj in India, back in the days, and when he came back and the local Hindu people, they would also congratulate him. And they know that this is not the same person, now he's Hajj Sab. <laughs> now he's a person we can trust more, more of a pious man. So since we've come back from the Hajj, we have to focus now and know that there's one reality that has to be in front of us and that is now we have to have the istiqamat and we have to live according to the laqab or according to the title that we've been given which is hajisa, hajj. Because the person who's a haji, he's the one that did hijjul bayt. He's the one that visited the house. He's the one that went to that place. When Fatum Mecca, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forgave all of his enemies. He went to that place. A place where he forgave his worst of enemies who killed even his family members. He forgave them. A place where the nabuwat started. A place which was the makhraj and the exit of the, of the hijrah. We also went to Medina Munawra. The place where the, was the intiha and, the, and the, you know, the, the end point of the hijrah. The place where Salat was, all the deen that we have today was either established in Mecca Mukarrama or Medina Munawra. So those two places that we have gone and those two places where the deen has been established after going to those two places, we should now be establishing the deen in ourselves as well. This is what a haji is. He goes to the haram, he goes to Medina Munawra, and he comes back with some effect on him. Now he's more inclined to come to the masjid. He's more inclined of taqwa, which is one of the main purposes of the, of the, of the hajj. وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ زَادِ التَّقْوَى وَاتَّقُونِ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Like it is in Ramadan, like in all of our amal. The end point and the purpose and the natija and the result of the hajj is muttaqi. Taqwa. Hudallin muttaqin. How we can become fearful people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is basically what we did when we went for the hajj. That's why ihram. Right? The minute you go there, the first thing you do is you start stop doing things. You get in there, and you put ihram on. Ihram comes from the word haram, meaning you have made certain things haram on yourself. Very simple things. Things that actually we do on an everyday basis and we are supposed to do. Clipping, clipping the mustache, clipping our hairs, putting etr on, wearing sewn clothes. Right? So when we put that ihram on, we put many, many natural things we made haram on ourselves. By putting the ihram on. And the sign of that was what? The obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the message is that if you can make these things haram, you cannot cut your nails, these natural things now are becoming haram on you, then those things which are innatural, ma'asi, sins, gunah, those things now should be natural for you to leave after the sihram. You prove to me, O oh my slave, that you can stay away from those things which are 
you know, which are natural, which are, you are allowed to do. But for my sake you left them. O oh, my slave, for my sake also leave those things which I have made haram on you. This is what the ihram is. This is what the tawaf is. Every single thing. This is just the obedience of Allah Ta'ala. Without even understanding also. Like a majnoon going around the house. <laughs> like a crazy person. Right. Not understanding why are we going around this house. Doesn't matter. Labayk Allahumma labayk. I'm there for you. Ya Allah, I'm present. Sa'i back and forth. Running also. Obedience of Allah Ta'ala. The deen of Islam, obedience. Look at how strange the obedience is. The running that we do in the Sa'i, the running that we do, which was done by Hajra, and she ran back and forth. So the running that we do, we run. And we run in cooperation, in, 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 you know, in respect and honor of a lady who ran. But our ladies are not supposed to run now. When we get there, no ladies, you don't run. She ran, that was okay. But you don't run. Obedience in deen. It's obedience. The deen of Islam. Whatever Allah Ta'ala says, سَمِعْنَا وَطَعْنَا This is basically what the Hajj was. It's a practice for it. With your money, with your body, your time, you sweated, you got sick, you ate food you didn't like, you went to bathrooms that were too small, right? And mashallah, I'm sure the intizam now is very good. And everything, mashallah, hopefully went well. But even if it didn't, it was for the sake of Allah anyway. It was for the sake of Allah anyway. One thing we should never do in Hajj is complain. And don't become the person who does ghibat of the haramain. Ulama have written about this. The person who does ghibat of the haramain. It's a big sin. Where he comes back and starts talking about the faults of Haramain and the faults of, for example, the you know the the uh, travel agent company which took us there, and he was like this, and he was like that, and the plumbing was like this, and the plumbing was like that, and the construction company and the Saudis and this that, and it was so mean and and they didn't listen to me and this that, like we're the president coming to a country. I remember when I went there with my ustad, Mona Fazal Rahman Sahib of South Africa. Not of Pakistan, Mona Fazal Rahman Azmi. So I went with him, we were going home, and he was also going somewhere. So we were in Umrah with him. It was our pleasure to do that with our Ustad, Sheikh Al Hadith. So when I got there, I went with Sheikh, and he just, we went and I said, Salaamu Alaikum to the person, and the person said, Walaikum Salaam, and he stamped, stamped, and gave back to me, very rudely. So I looked at my ustad and I said, how rude these people are. We are coming with the ihram and we are coming. We are the hajis, visitors. Why is so rude? So he looked at me, he smiled. He said, you're acting like you're the first person that's ever been here. <laughs> this poor guy sees three million people in the next two weeks. <laughs> you're acting like you, what would you do? Are you going to smile for everything? Three million people are coming in there, give the guy a break. He's going to be doing that all day for the next three days. He probably won't even get sleep. You're not the first haji that's come here. So relax, be, be, you know, be, don't be so, so harsh. So alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala took you there. It was a very great thing. Now when we come back, istiqamah is very important. Istiqamah is very important. And very important that we react to this hajj and we become better Muslims. There's one ayat of Quran, which the ulama have said is a sign. It shows a sign of the qurut of Allah Ta'ala. And that after seeing the qudrat of Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala saving us and bringing us into good condition from bad condition, a token of gratitude that we should show is that we should become better Muslims. When a person's in the middle of the ocean, in the dark, and the waves become tidal waves, and now, you know, it becomes like clouds and mountains hovering over you, and you feel like you're about to die. You make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leaving everything aside, and only making dua with ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What dark waves of sin we must have been involved in before we went to the hajj. 
what pareshani and what worries we had. That, oh Allah, how are you going to forgive me? Allah Ta'ala took us to that hajj. And we raised our hands and made dua like we've never made dua before. In front of Kaaba, we cried. And if there's, you know, if we can't cry, and I'm one of those people that doesn't cry so much. But when you raise your hands in front of Kaaba, it just comes out. It just comes out. And even if it doesn't, the call of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, فَإِلَّمْ تَبَقُوا فَتَبَاقُوا If you can't cry, then pretend like you're crying. Then inshallah, مَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِكَوْمٍ فُوَا مِنْهُمْ If you act like a people, then you'll be from amongst them. Allah Ta'ala will raise you with those who cry. So this person now sees, you know, your sins are being forgiven and you're making that dua and Allah Ta'ala forgives your sins. Your hajj gets accepted. Or some musibat and difficulty you win, Allah Ta'ala saves you. فَلَمَّا نَجَاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ فَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَسِدْ Then Allah Ta'ala brings you to the dry shores. Allah Ta'ala forgives your sins and brings you back to New York. MashaAllah, your hajj is complete and your sins are forgiven. فَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَسِدْ And then after that you become again a moderate Muslim. Moderate. Ah, I'll come to the masjid sometimes when I get a chance. My daughter is getting married next week. What do you want me to do? It's my only daughter. So we're going to have the music and the band and we're going to have the mixed gathering. Allah Ta'ala will forgive. Na'udhu Billah. And this is after Hajj. And we're going to do this and that and Idur Udur. There's no reason to start opening up, elaborating on these things. So now that we're back from the Hajj and we've seen this Qudrat, this qudrat and this greatness of Allah Ta'ala, to be a moderate Muslim and to be that regular guy, you know, that's not gonna, that's not gonna, you know, it's gonna, it's not gonna work now. Now we have to make an effort to become sabikum bil khairat. Before we're in the fourth, fifth saf, now we have to be in the first saf. We're haji. Before we're giving some, now more money in the path of Allah. Because now we've seen, our yaqeen has grown. Our conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we've seen the greatness of Allah. So how we back that up and how is it we're going to react with that? We have to react with that with an increase in piety. We must make dua for this. We must be in the right environments. Keep coming to the masjid and sit in the environment of the masajid. Stay away from bad environments. And ask Allah to accept your hajj and to take you back over and over again. May Allah ta'ala bless us with more visitings to the, you know, to the Haram and to Medina Munawwara. May Allah Ta'ala accept all of our Hajj and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make things easy for us in this world and the hereafter. Again, I congratulate all of you. May Allah Ta'ala accept your Hajj and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make it a means of salvation for you, your families, and for us on the day of Qiyamah. Wa akhu da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you very much, Marana Imam Mikhail. Uh, it was a great pleasure having him here. He wasn't feeling well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him sihat, but he still came. May Allah give him jaza. Like uh, Imam Mikhail said, obedience, samiana wa tuana. The life of a Muslim is obedience. May Allah make us the obedient slave of himself. You know, like uh, Imam Sawa was saying that people go around, around the Kaaba for what? To Obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the order of Allah, that's what we do it. There's the one incident I, I, I mentioned here before. Uh, I have a friend and I, we were sitting and I, there's a Jewish guy, he's asking my friend, he's in, in a funny kind of way, he said, what kind of Muslims are you? You are worshipping a stone. You are going around a stone. I mean, this is a civilized word. This is what you pray, a stone. So this brother, he said, no, we don't pray stone. We don't pray to this Kaaba. We just obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, go around the Kaaba, face that way, we face that way. If Allah told us to face the other way, we'll face the other way. He said, the difference between you and us, it whatever Allah says, we do it. And look at your life. Anything your Prophet Musa Islam said, you question that. Anything he said, we question that. This is the big difference between you and us. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the obedient slave of himself. And uh, this is the great pleasure, it's a beautiful night to, the, to among the company of the Hujaj and Ulama Akram. And the combination of Ulama and Hujaj. There are Ulama here who went for Hajj. And this is the great pleasure, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy on this whole community who produce these kind of people. And with that, there's a, you know, I will uh, request uh, Imam Kashif, uh, who also went for Hajj. MashaAllah is from our community also. This was a great pleasure of having him among us. And uh, I don't see Hafiz Ubaidullah, uh, uh, Mahbub? Hafiz sir. I'm not going to make and mention the name of the Hujaj because some of the Hujaj told me they don't mention our name. May Allah accept them, accept their du'as. But again, I will, it will be my humble request for the Hujaj to please come forward. The reason I'm calling our Imam Hafiz Zubaydullah is you know that he also went for Hajj and he's our Imam. He should be in the position of Imam close to us. And the other important person who went for Hajj is our Amir, as you know, Brother Sarfraz, he went for Hajj also. He, go, he goes uh, almost every year. And uh, we uh, have another Shura member, you know, uh, Abdul Karim, he went for Hajj with his family, with his uh, father, mashallah, he's uh, also here. And these are the people, I think I, man I can mention their names, and I'm scared of mentioning more names, I don't know if the brothers will like or not. But uh, wasting any more time, I will request uh, Maulana Kashif, Imam Kashif Aziz, to give us the marvel of the Nasiha, which he comes for. And, with, and after that, we will request all the Hujaj to say something for their experiences, what they experience, so the people learn. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Amma ba'du fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. La'in shakartum la'azidannakum. Wa la'in kafartum inna azabi lashadeed. Wa qala ta'ala. Innama yataqabbalullahu minal muttaqeen. وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحج المبرور ليس له جزاء إلا الجنة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما Respected علماء اكرام Elders, brothers, mothers and sisters in Islam It's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all of us that he made us human beings the best of all the creations Another great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave us this kalima la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah in the lap of our mothers without any sacrifice, without any requests and this is the key to success in this dunya also and in the hereafter also. Another great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all of us, he made us in the ummah, the nation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last nation to come on the face of this earth, but the first nation to enter Jannah on the day of judgment. For this also we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you know, this is a gathering uh, for the people, alhamdulillah, who got the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to undertake the journey of hajj. I won't take a lot of time. I'll try to inshallah wrap up in 10 minutes. So those who are here and are here ready to share their experiences with you, inshallah, they would get ample time. The ayah that I recited in front of you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ More or less meaning in English, if you are grateful upon my bounties, I would certainly increase the bounties upon you. The Mufassirin tell us that the meaning of this ayah is 
that the bounties of Allah, that Allah has given us the ni'mats, the blessings, the material things, or the different things that Allah has given us in this world, if we utilize those things in the obedience of Allah, and do not use those things, our health, our wealth, our time, for example, we don't use this in the disobedience of Allah, stay away from the prohibited things, and only use it for the sake of Allah, mold our life in a manner that is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will increase the bounties upon us. We have fulfilled the rights of those bounties. The same amount of time, the same energy, and the same wealth that our brothers and sisters chose to go for Hajj and use it could be used at some other place also, could be used for some other cause also, could be used for some other purpose also. That Allah guided them, Allah accepted them, Allah gave them the tawfiq. So this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. The hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhi narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Mufassireen mentioned this hadith in the tafsir of this ayah, that when a person gets the tawfiq of doing the shukr of Allah, when a person gets the tawfiq of doing the shukr of Allah, then Allah will never deprive him of the barakah and the increment in his blessings. Okay. Now the barakah, the increment in the blessings could be in volume also, could be in numbers also, or could be in continuity of those blessings also. Either Allah will increase the numbers of that specific blessing, or either Allah will continue that blessing for his entire life. On the contrary, on the flip side, wala in kafartum in na'adabi la shadid. If you are ungrateful upon the bounties of Allah, then the punishment of Allah is severe. What is being ungrateful? The material things and the health and the wealth and the time and the different things that Allah has given us, if we use them against the commands of Allah, in the disobedience of Allah, then as if we are showing ingratitude to Allah for the health that Allah has given us, for the time that Allah has given us and for the wealth that Allah has given us. If Allah allows someone to undertake the journey of Hajj and go to his house, whether once or whether twice and whether again and again, this is a sign of the love of Allah. Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, rahimahullah, a great scholar of the 8th century, the students of one of the, uh, the student of uh, Ibn Qayyim al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, a very, a very celebrated scholar who has a lofty position in the Hanbali school of thought, he has written a book, Lata'iful Ma'arif, and he has mentioned the virtues and the a'mals that should be done in every Islamic month. So I'll share a few things from what he has written uh, that is related to Hajj. He mentions the story of Ali ibn Muwaffaq, rahimahullah, that Allah gave him tawfiq to go to Hajj for 60 times. 60 years he went for Hajj. After the 60th Hajj, he sat down alone in the room and he reflected upon himself. And he asked himself, I don't know whether my hajj is accepted by Allah or not. He went to sleep. He saw someone in his dream. He asked him the question, O oh Ali, do you call anyone to your house again and again unless you love him? Only that person can, can, can come to your house and see you again and again that you have some level of relationship with him. So this was the answer to his question. He woke up and he was at ease. So if Allah allows someone to go to hajj and see his house, and the city of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then this is a sign of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this is a sign of favor of Allah upon him and her, and we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. The second ayah that I recited, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah mentions this ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah. It is the dialogue that is going between Habil and Qabil, the two sons of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, our father. So one of the sentences that Habil said upon the sacrifice that was given, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ More or less meaning in English, Allah accepts the good deeds only from the pious people. Allah accepts the good, deed only, good deeds from, only from the pious people who fear Allah. Now all of the Muslims have some level of taqwa. Some fear of Allah though the level differs. There is a high level of taqwa also, there is a low level of taqwa also, but somewhat fear of Allah is, the, is there in the heart of each and every Muslim. Now at this point, before I move forward, the purpose of mentioning these, sharing these words with you is, this is the mizaj, this is the nature, these are the feelings that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us 
that these should be the emotions and feelings each and every Muslim has when he fulfills the command of Allah, whether it's the Hajj, whether it's the Salah, whether it's the fasting. You might have heard these words at the end of Ramadan also every year. You might have heard these words at the, uh, in these type of gatherings also. So it's a repetition of the same thing. What should be my and your emotion and feelings once Allah gave us the tawfiq to fulfill this pilgrimage, to fulfill this pillar of Islam? So Allah says it, he only accepts the good deeds from the pious people. This means some level of taqwa or fear of Allah should be there. This is a condition, this is a prerequisite for our amals being accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There might be many shortcomings. Okay, I am a human, we are all human beings. There are shortcomings for sure. But we should be fearful whether our amals are accepted by Allah or not. Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah under the tafsir of this ayah mentions the saying of Hassan Basri rahimahullah, a great tabi'i. He says, in my time, when people used to do good deeds, they were so fearful as if they have committed a sin. میرے زمانے میں جب لوگ نیک آمال کرتے تھے تو نیک آمال کر کے اتنا ڈرتے تھے جیسے گنہگار لوگ ڈرتے ہیں دا فیئر آفٹر ڈوئنگ گڈ ڈیڈز آلسو دا فیئر دیر ہیز اللہ ایکسپٹیڈ دس فرام می اور ناٹ دیر از انادر آئی این سورت المؤمنون اللہ سیز والدین یوتون ما آتو و قلوب ہم وجلا مورلس میننگ ان انگلش دیز پیپل گیو واٹ ایور دے گیو صدقات چیریٹی ان دا پات آف اللہ بٹ دیر اسٹیٹ از سچ دیر حال از سچ قلوبهم وجلا their hearts are trembling and shaking out of the fear of Allah what does it mean that maybe there is some lapse maybe there is some shortcomings in my good deeds that because of those shortcomings Allah might reject my good deeds in the tafsir of this ayah the hadith of Tirmidhi comes in Aisha radiyallahu anha inquired from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that oh Rasulullah this ayah came down for the people who do good deeds but at the same time they drink wine also and they steal also rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied o daughter of siddiq this is radiyallahu an this is not what is meant in this ayah what is meant is these are the people who are the forerunners in doing good deeds but they do good deeds they pray salah they fast also they give sadaqa also but their heart is trembling from inside that maybe because of the shortcoming lack of sincerity or lack of conditions Maybe my good, my good deed is rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after doing these amals, first of all, including myself, I'm saying it for myself first, that we should have these emotions and feeling. My pur- the purpose is not to scare you or to make you lose hope. The purpose is this is the mizaj. This is, these are the emotions that has been given to the ummah by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these are required at the end of every amal. So we should have these feelings and we should cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh Allah, you gave me the tawfiq. You are the one who gave me the tawfiq. You are the one who gave me the strength. You allowed me. Now you should accept it from me. And I would end with this targeting myself first. In his same book, in the, mention, in the, in the chapter of Muharram, Ibn Rajab Hanbali rahimahullah mentions when the hujjaj come back, you should meet them. You should request for dua to them. At the end, he mentions this that uh, some of the Salaf Salihin they used to say. Now this is the point that is a lesson for all of the people who went for Hajj, whether this year before or before that also. What is the purpose of Hajj? What is the lesson we get from there? So he says some of the Salaf Salihin they used to say, when a person kisses the hajr aswad or when he touches the hajr aswad or does the istilam of hajr aswad from far away, as if he's saying to Allah that I will leave my life of sins. As if he's saying to Allah that I do tawbah and repentance from my life of sins. Then he mentions the saying of Ibn Abbas radiallahu and the great Mufassir, Hibru Hazihi al-Ummah wa Imam al-Mufassirin. He says Ibn Abbas radiallahu and said that Hajr Aswad is the right hand of Allah. Now I'd stop at this point. Allah is pure from all any organs or any limitations. Whenever the Sahaba radiallahu anhum or the scholars tell us that the hadith says so and so, it, 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 the purpose is to emphasize and to show us the significance and value of this thing. So Ibn Abbas radiallahu an says that Hajar Aswad is the right hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth. When a person grasps Hajar Aswad and kisses it as if he has kissed the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Ibn Rajab further continues 
Ikrama rahimahullah, the great mufassir and the student of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhi mentions his saying that Hajr Aswad, when a person touches Hajr Aswad and those people who did not see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as if they are doing allegiance and bay'ah on the hand of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are the sayings that give us, we can deduce from these sayings when a person undertakes this journey the main purpose is to repent and come back and make sure the life what I was doing apparently I'm an imam in front of you but in, a, in my private life whatever sins I commit if I don't make a resolve with Allah that after this Hajj I would try my utmost best to leave these sins that I commit then as if I have not benefited from my journey. So my respected elders and brothers, this is a lesson for all of us, whether we went this year, whether we went the year before or before that, whoever has gone for Hajj, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the Hajj, Ameen, and whoever has not gone, gone, may Allah has have not gone yet, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the opportunity also, Ameen. Jazakallah. Jazakallah khair, Imam Khashif. Thank you very much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy on our Imams and with that on the whole community. MashaAllah, you see a lot of brothers and sisters who went for Hajj. Uh, like a uh, like lot of the brothers who are here, they want to hear from Hujjaj. Brother who